This is News 3 Now at 5. And thanks for staying with us. Dane County will move into phase two of its reopening plan starting on Monday. This allows restaurants, gyms, and retailers to open to 50% capacity. Our Adam Duxter is live on State Street with why health officials are cautiously optimistic. Adam? Eric and Susan, it's no secret that things have definitely gotten a little bit more crowded up and down here on State Street ever since phase one went into effect in Dane County at the end of last month. But phase two would offer these shops and retailers even just a little bit more breathing room. Uh, county health officials say they needed more than a half of the nine metrics they were tracking since phase one to be green to move forward to phase two. And as of today, six of those nine were. Now, not only does phase two expand capacity for businesses, but it also doubles sizes for outdoor gatherings and increases sizes for indoor gatherings too. Still, doctors say coronavirus can get you sick. It really is maintaining that situational awareness around that risk and, you know, each and every one of us doing things to mitigate that risk of transmission for ourselves and those around us. Today, the Dane County Public Health Department using that same cautious optimism, encouraging folks to limit their trips if possible, and if they do have to gather in a group, to do so outside. Also, they're encouraging folks to get tested at the Alliant Energy Center, where tests are available six days a week. We've got more info about that and on Phase 2 as a whole up on our website, channel3000.com. Adam Duxter live on State Street. Adam, thanks. Some Catholic schools in Wisconsin are planning on starting back up in the fall. That's according to Madison Diocese Bishop Donald Hying. The bishop and the superintendent of Catholic schools sent out a letter saying they will consult local health officials to develop plans and protocols to reopen safely. That includes 44 schools in the Madison Diocese that are located in 10 counties across the area. Bishop Hying says all of those plans will be based off CDC guidelines. More than 22,000 Wisconsinites have now tested positive for COVID-19. We've seen 291 new cases since yesterday, bringing the state's total to 22,286. Eight more people have died from complications from the virus. More than 15,000 people have recovered from coronavirus. The positive percentage of new COVID-19 tests has gone down to 2.8% today, with the exception of yesterday, every day this week has had a percentage below 3%. Now nationwide, we are seeing a new surge in coronavirus cases as the total reported number stands at more than 2 million. Yesterday, South Carolina and Florida announced their highest daily totals in cases to date. The latest data shows at least 14 states have seen spikes in hospitalizations since Memorial Day. A new University of Washington model often cited by the White House is projecting nearly 170,000 COVID deaths by October 1st. It says we could also see 1,000 deaths per day by the start of October with major daily increases through September. There are some scattered showers out there this evening. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Well, those have really popped up over about the last hour and a half, mainly through Dane County and areas just to the south. You can see how those clouds have built up right about over Madison as a cold front starts dropping southward and eventually will lead to cooler weather across much of southern Wisconsin. You can see those showers, a few of those producing some brief heavy downpours around Middleton to uh, around 50 and then into Rock County, uh, just northwest of Janesville and into Walworth County toward Lake Geneva. Those are drifting toward the south. Areas north of Madison right now, rain-free and probably will stay that way. But you can see the difference in wind directions, mainly from the northwest, from Madison to the west, and, to the nor and from the northeast to the east of Madison. And take a look at the difference in temperatures. Where the winds are from the northwest, still 80s, mid-80s over western Wisconsin in Boscobel and Prairie du Chien. Milwaukee with that lake breeze, 55 degrees, 30 degrees cooler, and that cool air will be spreading over southern Wisconsin during the evening hours. So look for the shower stand, but temperatures will drop off into the middle 40s by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow will be partly to mostly sunny, more clouds south and west of Madison, more sunshine to the north and east. High temperature only at 68 degrees. We'll see another cool day on Sunday, but a big warm up's on the way for next week. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. Four people are dead. Multiple people are injured after a series of crashes that happened on I-3990 this morning. Wisconsin State Patrol says just before four o'clock this morning, two semi crashed on the highway. Now, this was near Lodi, just north of DeForest. About an hour later at five, another semi crashed into that crash, injuring two troopers 
and highway worker. Traffic started piling up and just before 7 there was then a seven car chain reaction crash near County K. State Patrol just releasing this dash cam video showing that second incident. It says that involved the two semis, a dump truck and four passenger vehicles. Our Gab Gabriella Becerra joins us live from the Wisconsin State Patrol headquarters to tell us how they're piecing it all together. Gabby. Eric and Susan, the interstate was closed for seven hours today as the Wisconsin State Patrol Traffic Reconstruction Unit worked to investigate what the cause of these crashes were. Officials gathered evidence, which consists of measurements, photos, and videos, both on the ground and aerial shots. They'll also be interviewing witnesses, but a lead investigator says it might take some time. This one, unfortunately, based on the severe nature of it and the fact that a number of the witnesses involved are still going to be in the hospital for lengthy periods of time and unable to talk to us means that this could mean uh, a matter of days or even weeks before we fully understand exactly what happened in it. Officials say a Columbia County highway worker and two state troopers suffered serious injuries. Those troopers were released from the hospital earlier this afternoon. State Patrol is thanking all of the agencies that helped out as well as civilian bystanders who were there to help pull others from their vehicles on the interstate. All right, Gabriella Becerra live at State Patrol headquarters near DeForest. Gabby, thank you. Madison police are searching for a suspect after an attempted homicide. They say a 21-year-old man showed up at a hospital this morning with an apparent gunshot wound to the back. The victim told officers he was shot while inside an apartment building on North Randall Avenue. Officers say it was a targeted attack. He is expected to survive. A teenager accused of being impaired is facing multiple charges after a crash on Madison's east side pinned two people and injured three. The Madison Police Department said witnesses estimated a car was speeding at 60 miles per hour yesterday afternoon when it ran a red light at the intersection of Milwaukee Street and South Fair Oaks Avenue and T-boned one car causing a five vehicle crash with serious injuries. Witnesses told police the accused driver, 17 year old Tavian Bauer of Madison, ran from the scene but then returned. He denied driving the vehicle. Police say a canine found a loaded handgun that had been hidden. Officers found drugs in the vehicle. Bauer could face multiple charges, including operating while impaired. Today, a Milwaukee area attorney is charged with a hate crime. She's accused of spitting on a high school student during an anti-racism rally in March. Lawyer Stephanie Rapkin showed up at the protest last Saturday. This was in Shorewood, parked her car in the street, blocking the march when protesters asked her to move the vehicle. Video shows Rapkin <laughs> spitting on the teen. Rapkin charged with disorderly conduct as a hate crime and battery to a police officer. The complaint says police went to Rapkin's home the following day. She resisted arrest and they say she need one officer in the groin. Right now, people are gathering at the state capitol to celebrate pride and honor black LGBTQI plus leaders. The protesters are asking to defund the police and put that money towards other resources in the Madison area. And I want to be able to organize with my community so that we can do better police policies. Defunding means using some of those allocated resources that we give to the police for our communities so that we can help the community. Now, this is a call we continue to hear from protesters, but what would that look like? Our Jamie Perez spoke to an alder who is pushing city council to eventually dismantle and abolish the police department here. She joins us now with more on what that plan entails. Jamie? This idea is actually coming from the newest and the youngest alder, Max Presta Giacomo. He says that the idea is not to just fire the hundreds of police officers that are working, but instead is to tackle the roots of what's causing the crime so that eventually we don't need a police department. Now, he's basically saying that he wants to reallocate these funds toward affordable housing, social services, violence prevention programs, education and health care, programs that he says we've been defunding for years. He said that he knows that defunding police sounds like a drastic and radical change to society, but says that this is simply changing the way we think and do things so that the change we're looking for can actually happen. Slavery in this country and you know was abolished by the 13th Amendment but a lot of people now are recognizing how it wasn't really abolished it was reformed. Um, slavery turned into um, prison labor now it's turning it, it turned into the civil rights movement Jim Crow now it's turning into mass incarceration. Um, so re really we're, we're, we're abolishing those systems. 
The budget has not come out yet, so he couldn't share with me how much funding he will propose to take away from the police department. And of course, not everyone on council is on the same page as him. So coming up tonight at 6, I'll share council members who do not agree with what he's saying. All right, Jamie Perez live tonight. Jamie, thank you. Madison police arrested a Wanna Key woman accused of looting in downtown Madison during recent protests. Police say 19-year-old Gabrielle Kokesh was taken into custody for burglary and criminal damage to property. Officers say she's accused of helping loot a store on State Street May 30th. Detectives say she was seen on video kicking a window at Power 9 Games. Officers say they're continuing to investigate other looters who damaged Madison businesses. President Trump says he is preparing executive action on police reform. Local officials in some cities have already started to put new reforms into place. Congressional Democrats introduced their police reform bill earlier this week, and Senate Republicans are expected to unveil their proposals early next week. We're working to finalize an executive order that will encourage police departments nationwide to meet the most current professional standards of force. And that means force, but force with compassion. President Trump plans to return to the campaign trail with a rally next Friday. He is seeing some criticism because that date, June 19th, is known as Juneteenth, the celebration of the end of slavery in the U.S. There is also controversy about the choice of the venue, Tulsa, Oklahoma. That is the site of a race massacre that resulted in the deaths of hundreds of African Americans nearly 100 years ago. Thousands of people around the world are taking part in demonstrations against racism today. Already, changes are being made in France after a series of fiery protests. The government announced a ban on the use of chokeholds by officers in Britain, New Zealand, and Belgium. Statues with a history of racism are being pulled from their posts. Area libraries and bookstores are seeing more people looking about looking for information about books on racism. Mystery to Me Bookstore on Monroe Street says readers are requesting more books by black authors about the Black Lives Matter movement and justice reform. They've even moved their store around so that those books are front and center in the store. We just saw the new New York Times list for next week and all 13 top spots are for um, anti-racism books, which is really staggering. This is the case across the country. It's not just here in Madison, um, which is encouraging for the Black Lives Matter movement and hopefully for the health of the country. The bookstore is also receiving requests, it says, for children's books that feature black casts, black authors, and race conversations. Mystery, Mystery to Me Bookstore, by the way, has been closed since mid-March, but they will reopen on Tuesday. Still ahead at 5, the Wisconsin State Democratic Convention is being held online tonight. What challenges the party will have to overcome? And tonight at 6, statues of Confederate leaders and Christopher Columbus are under fire, including in Columbus, Wisconsin, the latest at 6. And stocks close the week with a nearly 500 point rebound from yesterday's worst day in three months. The Dow adding 477 points and NASDAQ up 96. S&P 500 added 39. We'll be right back. The 17th Annual Madison Area Parade of Homes, exclusively sponsored by Nuns, featuring newly constructed homes in five of Dane County's most sought-after neighborhoods. The newest trends, tech, and designs. Visit MadisonParadeOfHomes.com for more information. I want to have a million dollars when I retire. Oh, great goal. So where do I start? Well, first you set up automatic transfers into savings. That can add up pretty quickly. For me, working on putting $1,000 into an emergency fund got me in a good saving habit. Already on it. Then put together a plan to get rid of debt and maximize your investments. You know, Summit helped me do it. Oh, that's great. I love how Summit gives people the knowledge and confidence to go after their goals. It's your money. Own it. Summit Credit Union. Steinhoffels has over $3 million of overstock, clearance, and one-of-a-kinds at rock-bottom prices. Get amazing closeouts before they're gone, like these dining chairs, $89 each. This accent chair, $99. Nightstands, $199. Sofas starting at $299. Queen bed marked down to $329. Power recline sofa, $599. All of these great deals, plus an extra 10% off all clearance. Plus, save up to 85% on name-brand clearance mattresses. Shop now through Sunday at Steinhoffels. 
save big money on your next project with 11% off everything right now at Menards. Menards has what you need to start and finish your home improvement projects. Plus, you'll save 11% on all of it. Menards also offers contactless pickup. Order and pay for your items online and have one of our team members load your order into your vehicle with zero contact. Stop waiting and start saving with 11% off everything now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Though challenges surround us, life still goes on. There's still time to dream, still plans to be made. And if you're retiring soon, still deadlines to be met. We talk with people every day who need to replace their employer benefits when they retire. We can answer your questions too, so you can feel good about the decisions you make. For a retirement benefits checklist, visit us online or call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company today. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. The 17th Annual Madison Area Parade of Homes, exclusively sponsored by Nuns, featuring newly constructed homes in five of Dane County's most sought-after neighborhoods. The newest trends, tech, and designs. Visit madisonparadeofhomes.com for more information. Tonight at 6, the State Democratic Party holds its convention online tonight, and the youngest member of Madison City Council is putting a plan together about how to defund the police. News 3 now kicks off its two-night salute to the class of 2020 with a very special half hour, sharing unique and touching ways area schools are celebrating their graduates and retiring staff. Join us tonight at 6.30 on News 3 Now. The state Democratic Party is holding its convention tonight. It will look very different than what the party originally planned. Our Amy Reid is live to explain what they're doing and what one political expert is watching for. Amy? Even with less time, or what was once, excuse me, a two-day event is now a two-hour virtual program. But even with less time, the party will still need to convince people to vote blue, both in state races and the big ticket in November. Coronavirus conventions are new ground for any of the parties. Tonight, Wisconsin Democrats opted to go virtual, planning a stacked lineup of speakers, including Senator Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. The biggest thing is keeping enthusiasm up and getting people to turn out. Charles Franklin, the director of the Marquette Law Poll, said getting that enthusiasm and messaging across through a screen might be difficult. I don't think it reaches a mass audience, but it actually might expand a little bit the number of Democratic uh, activists and interested players who can participate this way, or at least watch the proceedings. The state's Republican Party is still planning an in-person convention for next month. Party leaders say they're checking CDC guidelines and working with a physician. We have gone through uh, numerous meetings with the venue to talk about social distancing, talk about how to make sure the movements of people throughout the convention are done in the safest way possible. Party chair Andrew Hitt said tonight he thinks Democrats will criticize President Donald Trump, though he said voters should look at the president's record. Franklin said Democratic leaders should also take the opportunity to look not just at Biden and Trump, but also the future of the state. There's no doubt that the Trump and Biden campaigns will be here campaigning a lot in the fall. And so in one sense, I think the state party might want to focus more on things closer to home and that includes invigorating its voters and not act as if it were purely a surrogate for the presidential campaign. Of course, this and the Republican convention next month are just a preview of the national conventions that we will see in August. Franklin said that the Democrats will likely see what works tonight and apply it to the convention in Milwaukee. That convention tonight starts at 7. Amy, thank you. All right, let's get a look at your first worn weather as we head for the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? It's been kind of an interesting day temperature-wise across southern Wisconsin. Really this morning, uh, the lake cooled air had pushed inland, and most of southern Wisconsin saw temperatures in the upper 40s to the lower to middle 50s. Notice the very little difference in temperatures. But watch what happens as the sun came up and things started to warm up. Inland areas warmed up very quickly. Areas near the lake did not. So as you can see, as we go through time, temperatures climbed into 
into the upper 70s and lower 80s from Madison westward. But notice, even by that time, there was about a 25 degree difference in temperatures between Milwaukee and Madison. And now that lake cooled air is starting to move inland. Madison has dropped to 72, even though Janesville is still at 86 degrees. But with time, that cooler air will spread over much of southern Wisconsin, and our temperatures will drop off very rapidly this evening. So if you go outside, be prepared for a big drop in temperatures. And also be prepared for some scattered rain showers. You can see uh, some heavier downpours just southwest of, or southeast of Dodgeville around Hollandale uh, to the south and west west of, of uh, Mount Horeb and Verona, and then also some heavier showers down in Greene County and around Janesville. As we put the radar in motion, you can see them drifting toward the south and southeast, and that's as that lake cooled air moves in. There's one flash, a couple flashes of lightning in there. For the most part, these are just heavier rain showers. Areas north of Madison has pretty well seen the rain end. In fact, if you look at the live view from the WIC sky cam looking out toward the east, all the heavier clouds now are shifting to the south and the skies are clearing to the north. The Platteville Queen Bee radio sky cam also shows uh, uh, some buildups to the uh, east of Platteville, but for the most part, all the rain has been east of there. Three things you need to know in the forecast. It'll be a cool weekend. Temperatures will drop into the upper 60s for Saturday and lower 70s for Sunday, but notice the quick warm-up next week. Already middle 80s by Tuesday could be pushing close to 90 degrees on Wednesday. Next chance of rain will probably be uh, on Thursday, so much of next week will be dry. Even then, uh, it'll be just a chance for showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures right now range from around 50 in Marquette, Michigan, and 50 in Milwaukee to the mid to upper 80s over most of Iowa and southwestern Wisconsin. As we check out the upper level winds, they're still from the northwest here. We're kind of on the dividing line between much cooler air to the north and east and much warmer weather to the south and west. In fact, as we take a look at the surface weather map, this cold front has dropped in from the northeast and cooled off the air uh, near eastern Wisconsin. A stationary front to the west becomes a cold front farther to the west. And the differences in uh, temperatures are pretty dramatic. In fact, uh, you can see temperatures in the 90s over Kansas, mid 80s as far north as southwestern Wisconsin, much cooler in the northern portion of the Midwest. That's the kind of area we're looking at, at least for this weekend, before we warm back up as the warm weather out west heads in our direction. 68 for the high tomorrow, big difference from the lower 80s and mid 80s that we had today, partly sunny and cooler for the day tomorrow. And then is the seven to 10 day forecast, 73 on Sunday, but then the rapid warm up with temperatures near 90 by Wednesday. A thunderstorm chance Thursday, a little break in the humidity means dry weather, weather for Friday and Saturday of next week, and maybe another chance for a shower or thunderstorm by Sunday into the following Monday. As we take a look at First Warren traffic right now, Beltline looking pretty good. This is the view from the Beltline at Park Street. You can see traffic moving pretty steadily in both directions there. Uh, right now there is a uh, disabled vehicle uh, on uh, the Beltline at John Nolan Drive, also Martin Luther King uh, Boulevard uh, demonstration there at Doty Street. The Beltline, though, seeing traffic moving pretty steadily in both directions. It's a 15-minute commute either direction between University Avenue and the interstate on the Beltline. Heading out of Madison, 25 minutes down to Janesville on I-3990 from the Beltline southward. Using US-12 out to Sauk City, it's a 16-minute commute. And taking East Washington Avenue and US-151 to Sun Prairie, it's a 14-minute commute. That's your News 3 Now First Warren Traffic. Okay, Gary, thank you. Ahead at 5, what the NFL is doing to help fight systemic racism. That's it for a short break. Stay with us. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Take a break from cooking at home and order takeout from your local Monk's Bar and Grill. Monk's is offering curbside pickup takeout service for your safety and convenience during these difficult times. Visit monksbarandgrill.com for takeout menus and online ordering. Here's to all the farm and fleet dads, the ones who get the job done right and take the time to pass it on. This Father's Day, give him a gift you know he'll love from the store dads love, Blaine's Farm and Fleet. For the casual dads, save $5 on all Columbia sportswear. For dads lawn, save $100 on this Cub Cadet riding mower. And for dads workshop, get $100 off this 20-gallon air compressor. Plus, get a free hat when you spend $50 or more in our sporting goods department. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. When looking for a TV and internet provider, we know you have a choice. This is Jessica. She still has satellite TV. Well, I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD, and we love Spectrum's 24-hour local news channel. Plus, we get exclusive access to premium original content with Spectrum Originals. 
I don't have that. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-976-4499. Spectrum Internet starts at 200 megabits with no data caps and a free modem. We have to get internet from another company and it isn't nearly as fast. Spectrum Internet, $44.99 a month. I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract and would have to pay up to $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it. I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum TV and internet from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-976-4499. I do all my shoe shopping at Rogan's because I know that I find what I'm looking for and save. You can count on great service, a huge selection, the best name brands, and the second pair is half price. And one more thing, a choice in how you save. I can get my second pair half price now or just save my receipt, come back anytime, and get my next pair for half price. Rogan's makes saving easy. Selection, service, name brands, and the second pair is half price. Visit online at roganshoes.com. Good morning class. Today's lesson is about shopping mocha. Do you know what day is coming up? 608 day. You just go to madisonmagazine.com, click on 608 day to find great deals from businesses we love in the 608. You know, like the area code. Very good, Emmy. When does this take place? The week of June 8th, 608. Madison Magazine makes it easy to shop local. She's my star. Take a break from cooking at home and order takeout from your local Monk's Bar and Grill. Monk's is offering curbside pickup takeout service for your safety and convenience during these difficult times. Visit monksbarandgrill.com for takeout menus and online ordering. Major League Baseball and the Players Union are trying to get the baseball season to start back up. The MLB has put forth a third proposal this week. The proposal includes offering players 80% of their prorated salaries and a 72-game regular season starting July 14th in an effort to start the pandemic-delayed season. The deadline for the agreement is Sunday night. The NFL pledging $250 million over the next 10 years to help fight systemic racism. The league said that money will be allocated to a fund that will also support the battle against historic injustices faced by African Americans. We'll also use its television network and other media properties to raise awareness. Last week, Commissioner Roger Goodell admitted the league should have listened to players earlier about racism concerns. Goodell's statement came in response to a video, Stronger Together, that featured multiple black NFL players calling on the league to take a strong stance in the wake of George Floyd's death. We'd like to remind everyone tonight, News 3 Now is paying tribute to the class of of 2020. Tonight and tomorrow night, we will air virtual graduation ceremonies for all of Madison's public high schools. We'll also air a special broadcast tonight at 6.30, immediately following News 3 Now at 6, to honor all 2020 grads and those retiring who didn't get the celebrations they deserved this year. We hope you tune in. Again, that starts tonight at 6.30. And we'll be back in a moment with a final check of your first born weekend forecast. The 17th Annual Madison Area Parade of Homes, exclusively sponsored by Nuns, featuring newly constructed homes in five of Dane County's most sought-after neighborhoods. The newest trends, tech, and designs. Visit MadisonParadeOfHomes.com for more information. Steinhoffels has over $3 million of overstock, clearance, and one-of-a-kinds at rock-bottom prices. Get amazing closeouts before they're gone, like these dining chairs, $89 each. This accent chair, $99. Nightstands, $199. Sofas starting at $299. Queen bed marked down to $329. Power recline sofa, $599. All of these great deals, plus an extra 10% off all clearance. Plus, save up to 85% on name-brand clearance mattresses. Shop now through Sunday at Steinhoffels. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Celebrate this 4th of July knowing you look your best with Plexiderm. Lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging. And all he uses is a small amount and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the act? 
ingredient. Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. And I did this to my father. We were at home, and we were screaming. Four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me, they really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It feels great, looks even better. I'm Neela, I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. Plexiderm, seriously, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there, like the bags are gone. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of hose feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to like get rid of the bags? And yeah, you would it absolutely could be a daily thing. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look at your genre, this is it. This 4th of July is the best time to get Plexiderm for $14.95. See it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. The 17th Annual Madison Area Parade of Homes, exclusively sponsored by Nuns, featuring newly constructed homes in five of Dane County's most sought-after neighborhoods. The newest trends, tech, and designs. Visit MadisonParadeOfHomes.com for more information. A minor league baseball team coming up with an interesting combination of a few ballpark favorites. The Charleston River Dogs is selling smoked cotton candy jacked burgers today. The burger features a bun, special sauce, an Angus beef patty, a rich slathering of cotton candy, and it's all topped off with some flavored Cracker Jack. This has got Franke written all <laughs> over it, and the team says it will only cost $12.99. I think that's a Canalti special. <laughs> No, actually, no, 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 no. That reminds me of the a State good Fair. Old or Chicago style hot dog <laughs> at a ball game. That's, That's like the kind of thing you see at the State Fair, though, like the deep fried turkeys yeah. and deep fried <laughs> bacon and all that stuff. All right, Gary, what are we looking at for the weekend? Final Some show. showers out there right now, uh, especially south of uh, Madison, heading toward Janesville. Uh, those will probably be gone within the next couple of hours, and then the cooler air moves in. Notice temperatures in the mid 50s by Milwaukee, and we'll see those northeasterly winds kick in and really drop the temperatures. Tomorrow, look for a high of only 68, 73 on Sunday, and then we're back up into the 80s next week. All right, we're back in 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6. CBS Evening News coming your way next. Stay tuned.